So Iron Pineapple is my favorite creator to watch on YouTube. He's mostly known for his Soulspawn content, so about the games from developer From Software. But he also has the series where he plays random Souls-like games found on Steam. He calls this Steam dumpster diving. These games are just like the ones from From Software, but usually fail to reach the same heights, to put it mildly. Bonefire lit. Now, you guys probably know me from Breath of the Wild. I played the game for 6,000 hours, two speedruns, blah, blah, blah. The point is, Breath of the Wild's unique take on an open world has clearly also, well, let's say, inspired other games. So in this video, I will be trying seven Breath of the Wild clones I found on Steam. Some obviously taking greater inspiration than others. Maybe we can even find a hidden gem within these. Once I'm done testing out the game, I'll give you a little summary of my thoughts. So get a snack or a drink or both and let's try out some Zelda clones. Also, if you like this idea, make sure to subscribe and I know to make this a series on the channel. I'm really close to 100,000 subscribers and I would greatly appreciate it. The games I'm going to play in this video are Craftopia, Yonder the Cloudcatcher Chronicles, Blue Fire, Bike of the Wild, Windbound, Immortals Phoenix Rising and Ocean Horn 2. But because I had to buy all of these games myself, I am very happy to introduce this video's sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a free-to-play hero collection RPG played by over 80 million players across the world. What I really enjoy about it as a speedrunner is the many ways you're able to build and improve your characters. Now, why should you try Raid? Let me literally spell it out for you. Ah, like regular updates and content. There's always new stuff coming to Raid. A, like Awakening, which allows you to make champions even stronger and more powerful. I, like inventive strategies that you can come up with to clear Raid's content even more efficiently with your dream team. And D, like the Doom Tower, that you can climb higher and higher to get huge rewards and even new champions. But that's not all. Raid's fourth anniversary is finally here and there's a ton to get excited about. From dedicated offers, free gifts, promo codes and events to a brand new fusion event where you can get your hands on an anniversary themed legendary champion. Oh, and as an Amazon Prime member who just got Genbo, keep an eye out for the next drop featuring some powerful savage gear. It's available from March 2nd until March 30th. If you haven't started playing yet, use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get a huge bonus in the epic champion Kelan the Shrike and more useful gifts. And since it's Raid's birthday, there's more. All new and existing players can just enter promo code 4 years raid to get their hands on 4 legendary skill tomes and more. And once you're in, you can find me under the name Limcube and maybe even join my clan. Thank you so much Raid for sponsoring this video. Alright, so first up is Craftopia, a survival action game from Japan which claims to combine many features like hunting, farming and more. This game is definitely one of the most shameless Breath of the Wild clones I have ever seen. I mean, just look at this. But anyway, let's give it a shot. Okay, here we are in Craftopia and what do I need to say? Um, I mean, I don't know if this shot reminds you of anything or this motorbike. Let's create a character. Okay, so there's character creation. I wonder... <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I've seen these shorts before. Okay, this is what I went with, pretty much the closest we could get to short hair Zelda. I'm still not completely sure about the hair. I guess this would be like more like it actually, now that I think about it. We're gonna go with this one. Um, and we're gonna name the character Zelda. Let's see what happens. That works. I mean, why wouldn't it work? And there's a red button now. Let's press the button, I guess. I don't know how loud that was in the recording. I'm probably gonna have to turn that down, but <laughs> that's an interesting start. We just like blew up the world, I guess. Okay, and now there's an elf or some goddess. Welcome, Zelda. Do you remember Earth? It's the planet you destroyed. With Craftopia, you get to start it all over again. May you be blessed with hope in this new world. <laughs> tutorial Woman 1 and Tutorial Woman 2. This is already very overwhelming. Um, reminds me of like an MMO. Uh, press left click to beat trees and stones to make tools as soon as possible. You can craft tools from O. So O, right, that's the crafting menu, but I don't have anything, so I can't craft anything. Okay, there's a chest here. What's in the chest? 
Oh. Uh, copper pickaxe, leather, roasted sweet potato, and a wooden stick. Okay, we have the pickaxe now. <laughs> wow. Wait, that animation is kind of cool. So I guess I'm going to start collecting some items. We have infinite things to do. I might also hit some chickens. Sorry. Earn skills with Y. Right, we can level up and learn the dodge action. So apparently we have like a Dark Souls role now. Oh, we do. A baseball bat. Wait a second. In order to equip this, you must master two-handed. So these are choo-choos, literally. Well, kind of. They're like ghosts. What is this? This looks like some battle pass. Check mission. Oh my god. Oh my god, what is happening? Complete. Everything is completing. My dopamine is rising. I got a bunch of skill points. So what can I learn now? Oh my god, there's so much. Rabbit jump. Jump height increases with skill level. I kind of want to level that up. Okay, I'm going a movement build in this. Let's see. Okay, the jump is already significantly higher. Oh, like look at the jump attack. Wait, this is sick. I'm gonna go like a bunny build. You know, I'm gonna like jump like that and then boom. This seems especially... <laughs> What? Make a glider on the stone workbench. Okay, gl glider is equipped now. That's what I want to try. Oh, there it is. Look at this glider. Does this look familiar at all? Not to me. This will allow you to double jump. You can even max out the double jump. Okay, I got, I'm going to go full jump build. I just want to see how... <laughs> I want to see how high you can jump. Okay, so I just crafted a blacksmith and... Oh my... God, this is only the second age and there's all of these weapons here from a water gun. I don't know if that depends on the age I'm in right now, but this is intense. All right, here I am. New clothing. I got a copper sword. My jump is incredibly high, so I'm feeling pretty ready to uh, face this dungeon here. The speeding trial beginner. Speeding trial? That sounds like something that I would like. Uh, I don't know if these things on the ground. Oh, there's a hoverboard. Wait, what? No way. There's a hoverboard. Okay, these controls are interesting. But hey, as long as we make it there in 1 minute 19, we'll be fine, right? I, I think from what I've seen, there's like two types of dungeons on the islands. One is like a speeding trial and the other one is probably a combat trial. So I'll go to the combat dungeon after this. I was going to say, is this like the end? What is this huge... Open. Wait, this is the shrine. Oh, what? Wait, how do I get off E? So this is like a shrine cube. Obtain slate of growth by clearing the ordeal. Whoa! All right, this is the actual dungeon. The other one was the speeding trial. Um, now that we have the strong sword, that should be easy, right? Did you learn dodge action? It's dangerous to fight against bosses without dodge action. That makes sense. No, I do know that yet. Oh? New music? Boss music? Why do I hear boss music? It's because I'm fighting... What is that? A guardian laser? I'm trying to roll the laser. Okay, okay. What? What? The, what? <laughs> what is going on? I think we get one jump attack in. And then when he shoots, we dodge. Oh, we have to go like behind the pillar. I see. This is just like test of strength. This is what I call gameplay. Oh my god, wait. wait he can jump higher than me? That is unbelievable. He's copying my strats. This... this <laughs> Wait, he is literally a guardian. This is gameplay, by the way. Yep. Mm -hmm. That was gameplay. Okay, beautiful. I finally made my hat. And I will now do what we have all been waiting for. Which is maxing out the double jump ability. Now our double jump is maxed. Our rapid jump is maxed. And this is what we have all been waiting for. Jump. Double jump. Jump attack. Amazing. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm hitting my own washing machine. This is incredible. This is what gameplay looks like. But anyway, um, that's Craftopia. So, aside from the insanely shameless Breath of the Wild copying, I actually kind of had fun with Craftopia. I liked the big skill tree and customization options the most, but wasn't a huge fan of the overwhelming crafting selection. In general, I'm not the biggest survival game player, but if you are and you like the Breath of the Wild look, this might be for you. I think this would be much more fun to play with friends, and it does have a multiplayer, but I heard it's pretty unstable. In general, it does run pretty poorly, but I mean for like $10, I guess it's all 
all right. We are used to that as Nintendo fans anyway. I would say you can probably get at least 10 hours of fun out of it. And hey, at least I didn't hate it. Now next up we have Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. They claim for this to be a relaxing open world adventure game where you can unwind and enjoy the slow life. And you know, despite me being a speedrunner at all, sometimes I really like games like that. Apparently they have 8 different distinct regions to explore too, so let's hop into it. Now here we are with Yonder. The Cloud Catching Chronicles. So let me just uh, start a new game. Uh, and there's character creation again. Uh, so I'll see you guys in a second when I made my character. I'm, I think I'm playing as a guy this time. All right, that's already it. Uh, not too much to change. Let's just uh, get into it. Okay. We got the cinematic cutscene going. Our dearest child, it broke our hearts when we sent you away, but it was the only way to keep you safe from the darkness that poisoned our land. Ooh, wait, this looks neat. Why is it so scary? The boat is pretty rocky for there literally being like no waves as well. Um, uh, wait, are we exploding? What, what? Every game I'm playing we're exploding. What is going on? Okay, so I'm the sprite seer and I have to explore these lands. Um, I don't know if that's our ship that's stranded here. This music is definitely giving Minecraft vibes. What's that strange blue glow? <laughs> Lumi? That looks like Gimme Ghoul from the hit game Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Okay, I discovered the sprite Lumi. Okay, now this is it, right? The Shrine of Resurrection moment. It's about to happen again. I can see it. Wait, it actually. <laughs> no shot! There's no way. That's so funny. Okay. <clears throat> now I see why people um, call this a Breath of the Wild clone. Okay. Okay. Green pastures. Um, got an achievement. Oh my god. <laughs> we really went from zero to a hundred, huh? Can we climb now as well? There's a chest. Okay, we can't really climb yet. Um, we got red shampoo. Wow, this is just like the storm over Hebra and in Tears of the Kingdom. Fairmont, is that the guy? Master Low. Ah. Hello, traveler. You look like you've been through some hard times. Please come inside. I can offer you some warm food and a soft bed. Okay, I guess we immediately go in there. That's kind of weird, but sure. The townsfolk apparently warmly welcomed me. Ever since that terrible accident years ago, Merc has been popping up. <laughs> Wait, I can't. So Merc is malice, I guess. I have new clothes. I can use the tap menu to check them out. That's the tattered coat. Wait, how do I put it on though? Oh, damn. Okay. We're like a real soldier now. Oh, wait. Red shampoo. I just used the red shampoo and I dyed my hair. So that is the Merc. I'm assuming, right? Can Lumi not just get rid of this? To purify the Merc, you must use sprites you have found. Oh, okay, so I need more sprites to make it past that Merc. All right, the fisherman. Oh, this is important, this is important. Fishy fishy in the brook. Can I catch you on a hook? Are you long or are you short? Doesn't matter if you're caught. Are you here for the first fishing competition? You need to catch more fish than anyone else to win. Well, to be honest, I don't even know the button that I need to press um, if a fish was to bite. Oh, I'm reeling it in. I'm reeling it in. I get it. It's like Fire Emblem. You have to like reel it the right direction. There it is. Princess fish. Oh, nice. A lace fish. We keep going. Okay, a dip fish. I want that big one. There it is. That's the one. Oh, it's, oh, it's a tough one. I got it. A five-star princess fish. Oh, okay. I found this statue and apparently you can spin it left and right. Maybe they need to look at each other. There we go. Another sprite. Cup. Oh, hey there. I'm Bushel. Minnie sent me to help you out. I'm a dead hand at repairs and I know a thing or two about running a farm. Hmm. Now you've cleared the mark. Let's roll up our sleeves and patch this place up. Quest complete. Repair the farm. Old McDonald achievement. Now let's check this farm out. There's already another sprite in there. And it looks like we actually got some farmlands to potentially plant stuff. 
Wow, I have my whole farm now. I even adopted a gruffle, which is not really facing me. But that's okay. Um, so it looks like there's farming in this game as well. You can have animals, you can garden. Yeah, actually, now that I think of it, I don't even think you can take damage in this game. This might be purely a game for exploration. There's at least no HP, but as far as I can see, I know you can't stay in the water. I don't think you always have to be able to die or to, you don't always need a challenge. Sometimes just running around, exploring without any worries in the world, other than potentially falling into the water. Uh, sounds pretty fun to me too. Oh wait, is that tower emitting that huge cloud? Oh, I see. I didn't make that connection, so I'm assuming that's what the story is gonna be. Like industrialization, kind of like fogging up the untouched lands. And you have to probably uh, defeat the evil forces of capitalism. All right, now I can clean the murk. Uh, at this cave entrance. I do kind of want to check out this cave. If there's any like serious cave systems. So if this is just going to be... Oh wow, okay. So you can actually go down and explore. And there's a web. Now I'm still not sure. I kind of wanted to find out if there's any enemies in this game. I really don't think so at this point. But this looks interesting. Oh, so it's an elevator. Wait, this is basically Dark Souls. Wow, this is literally Dark Souls. Unlocking shortcuts, elevators, combined with the Breath of the Wild opening. Very interesting. So I like that a lot. I like the Merc that you remove that then unlocks you like a shortcut or something. That's really convenient. But I don't like that it literally blocks you from like reaching new places. I feel like if they found the right mix of like, yeah, nice shortcuts, uh, extra content hidden in Merc, like the farm, that would have been perfect. Um, but I'm probably going to cut it off here. I think I got the gist of it and move on to the next game. Okay, so I actually played Yonder for another hour after this, mainly because I think it looks adorable and is actually relaxing to play. Unfortunately, my concerns are still the same. It feels very fetch questy and I just wish the entire world was explorable right away and removing the murk would simply unlock shortcuts and additional content in the world. It does introduce gimmicks like farming and a job system later, but none of them feel really fleshed out. The idea is amazing. A cozy exploration game with no enemies and a richly developed world sounds so good, but Yonder misses the mark on the world building and doesn't keep my interest enough. However, if you don't mind the fetch quests and you just want a nice, peaceful game to turn your brain off to, this game could be for you. Especially if it's on sale like it was for me. On to Blue Fire next. It describes itself as a difficult 3D platforming challenge with diverse enemies, quests and collectibles. And this game was actually featured in one of Iron Pineapple's Souls-like videos and he mentioned that it definitely has some 3D Zelda vibes. It also looks like something I would genuinely enjoy as it takes influence from Hollow Knight, which happens to be one of my favorite games of all time. It also does have stylish looking movement, which is usually my number one reason to speedrun a game. So that said, I'm just gonna hop into it mostly blind. The, the, okay. This has to be a joke, right? Why did I pick only games exclusively where something explodes at the start? I mean, I don't even know if it exploded, but <laughs> what is going on? All right, this reminds me of Malice from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I'm not sure if I'm the only one. Looks kind of familiar. And this is us, I think. All right, here we are. We got a jump attack and a normal attack, and this really does look like Malice. We have a hearts in the top left, and I'm assuming something like souls, maybe? Bottom left reminds me of Dark Souls. Number three, what is that? Oh, that's a heal. Okay, I just wasted my heal, good to know. And then, is this a bonfire or what? Oh. <clears throat> oh, wait, emote? One and four. Okay, we can wave. Okay. The menu is literally Breath of the Wild. Same menu. So this does actually remind me of Hyrule Castle a lot now. With the malice on the side and like the stairs like that. I guess the stairs are broken, but not sure if that's specifically inspired from it, but it definitely does remind me of it. Oh wait, this looks like a boss room. Hello? Oh yeah, of course. This room looked way too suspicious. 
Okay, so there's small little malice things. Very intense music. Oh god. Um, I need to remember I have a heal as well. Okay, I played that pretty poorly, but it doesn't matter. The old key, that's what I was looking for. Can be used to open a locked door. Hmm, so keys, giving Zelda vibes. And a shield. A piece of magical armor crafted by the fire guards protect from damage and reflect darkness. Ah, okay, so that's on control now. Uh, that makes sense to me. A little bit of a Daruk's protection look to it, though, I will say. Um, can I get over there? There's like a very scary looking dude at the end. He looks cool, though. Okay, and a suspicious looking cube. Oh god, is that him? He doesn't look evil. Is he evil? Throughout your journey, you will come upon many of those void entrances. These gates are links to a forgotten realm known as the Void. You must seek as many void entrances as you can. Through them, embrace the void. <laughs> okay. And seek out your ancestor's power. Okay, Vaughn, thank you. Okay, embrace the void. We should go into the cube. The Grace of Lula. Difficulty one out of five stars. Okay. Wait, so these are like Super Mario Sunshine, like movement based levels. Grace of Lula. Okay, so I guess this is just movement based. We have to collect 30 of those, uh, I guess, void essences. There we go. Okay, what is this? A checkpoint or. Okay, I was way too impatient. Now I find out. It is, it is. Okay, so it is a checkpoint. Okay, and dash, and dash, and dash, and that should be it. Oh, we get a hearts container, essentially. I see. Would you like to learn a new move for 200 ore? I mean, sure, I'm assuming that this is one of those games where you lose your ore on death. So, uh, why not? Techno! New emote unlocked. Okay, this, better, this was better worth it. Let's see. This was definitely worth 200 ore. Diamond wings? Crafted during the War of Penumbra, these powerful blades made from diamond can tear with ease through darkness. We just got a diamond sword? 10 damage, of course I use those. Arcane tunnels. There's pirates in here. Okay, so the arcane tunnels, we got some slime monsters here. I was gonna say, they look like they would be stomping. Oh, wait. Ah, uh, why am I even surprised? Welcome to Green Path, basically. Um, this looks like a scary... Wait, are there spikes? Oh, I see. So it's like your typical touch at once and spikes will spawn. At least we made it to the void level. I do want to check that one out. Oh, we could get a new emote here. What? Which? What is it? Windmill? Wait, this sounds amazing. Wow. Okay, you know what? I think I'm going to play this game a bit more. I want to try out more of these voids and see what other enemies are around. And I'm probably going to cut this all together in some sort of montage and then give you my opinion. Because so far, this is actually pretty fun. So far, Blue Fire was my favorite of the games I played in this session. Does it feel like Breath of the Wild though? Not at all really. Other than the menu, I guess. I think this game is best described as a mix of traditional 3D Zelda, Hollow Knight, and Mario Sunshine. And I know that sounds strange, but I actually think it works. And I might even revisit this game on my stream. I will also say though, the controls for especially the wall run ability are a bit rough and make some of the more difficult platforming hard, but it is manageable. If you like 3D platformers, traditional Zelda games or Hollow Knight, I definitely recommend this game. On sale, I paid 6 euros for it and got the game, the full soundtrack and the free expansion in this bundle and for that price I think you should try Blue Fire out and see if you like it yourself. Okay well, I know you've all been waiting for this one. Next up is Bike of the Wild. 
You got that right. This is a real game on Steam for $4.99. I don't even want to waste any more time. Let's play. Why is this like the Path of Pain at the very beginning? This is like a mix of the Shrine Resurrection and Path of Pain. You can also change colors as you unlock them. This is literally the Path of Pain. I... <laughs> I don't know why there's like a giant cliff on my on my right in the literally b very beginning. Like, why is the tutorial like a cave where you can fall down? Okay, dude, this is not getting any easier, is it? Th this is the tutorial section, by the way. Like, this is the Shrine of Resurrection. Left bumper resets the camera. Okay, it's good. It can we leave this now? What if I fall down now? I'm literally gonna quit the game. Click the left stick to set killer angle angles. Become an action photographer. Okay, so for the for the YouTube thumbnail. No, 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 no. What is this? This is the tutorial area, by the way. Did I unintentionally pick up like an old F4 type game when I wanted to just play like Bike of the Wild? Okay, I think we made it. Oh, there it is. This is the Shrine Resurrection shot. Here it is. Bike of the Wild. Whoa. No! Don't fall! There's a pizza in the back? So this is just like Breath of the Wild now. Also, I realized my mouse is on screen the entire time. I'm gonna get like 700 rage comments about that, I'm sorry. Is there like any enemies or is this just exploration? Oh wait, there's Hebra. Wait, this is the mountain where Nadra is. Isn't it literally exactly like that? Like Mount Laneru up there. Why is there dollars on the ground? Why is there a random dollar spray texture on the ground? Oh my god, the camera is suffering. Why are there like presidents? Oh no, they're like composers. I guess because there's like classical music playing. I'm pretty sure that guy is Beethoven, right? The guy with the red scarf. And it's the guy to the left, Mozart? Don't judge me too hard. I'm not... I don't know my composers that well. Wait, what did it say? P uh, press both bu... What the hell? I pressed both bumpers to get unstuck anyway and it put me to the skate park. I mean... I'll take that, I guess. I did want to go to Mount Laneru, but I I'll go for some tricks. Wait, wait, let me set a killer angle. Okay, I set the killer angle, watch this. This is gonna be for the thumbnail. Boom, okay. Not even that bad. Damn, look at that killer angle. Wait, you can drive on water. This changes everything. I'm trying to climb this mountain. The music is perfectly fitting right now. But it's a bit steep. But I believe I can make it. I'm pretty sure I'm stuck. Okay, whatever. That's Bike of the Wild, I guess. Okay, so let's be real here. I got Bike of the Wild because it has a funny name and that's pretty much all I expected to get from it. A funny joke. The thing is, I kind of like the idea of exploring a vast world on just a vehicle without anything else if it had good world building or fun controls or had good performance. All of which Bike of the Wild does not have. But hey, it does have a funny name, right? Windbound says that in this game you're shipwrecked, alone, on an uncharted island and have to explore, adapt and navigate the land and perilous seas to stay alive. Now at first this sounds more like Wind Waker than Breath of the Wild, but after looking into the exploration and survival aspects of the game a little more, I definitely see the Breath of the Wild inspiration. But I think it's time to just try it out and see how it plays. We have health, we have, I think, weapons. What does number one do? I have a knife on me. That's the only thing I do have. <laughs> this attack animation is pretty, um, pretty stiff. We only get to do this one attack. Crafting, press tab to bring up the inventory and crafting menu. We can make a rope made from grass. And then we can use uh, two grass ropes and five palm fronds to make a simple pouch. Okay, so gotta find some palm leaves, I think. Should I try and hunt this boar? Oh, now it's in a trap. It's trapped. No. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I think it eventually... Um, there we go. Razor back. Okay, okay. Now we, are, we initiated combat. Oh, God. I don't know if I can roll or something like that. Um, <laughs> wait, 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 combat lock. Okay, so we can, like, lock. Can we dodge? Oh, space. Okay, so this is Dark Souls now. Wait, this is actually something for Iron Pineapple. There's a dodge roll. Pretty sure that's all you need to be a Souls-like. 
And then, wait, do I have iframes on the dodge? I think I might have iframes. Okay, that made that game better. Okay, now let's check out this um, suspicious temple. What is this blue light here? I can't interact with it. Aha. Uh -huh. Got a cutscene. This looks like some sort of instrument, I guess. Potentially. Oh! Our bracelet started glowing. Well, that's not a bracelet. What is it called? Circlet? I don't even know. It's a boat oar. It's a magical boat oar. Oar of the ancestors. An ornate, mysterious oar. Through ancient, it remains in perfect condition. Occasionally, it trembles in your hands as if something resides within. Wait, is this a... Oh, it is. Boat building. Press tab to bring up the inventory and crafting menu. Then use E to select the boat parts page. We got a boat. Push. No, no, no. I want to get in there first. Okay, and then I'll row. I know I haven't really crafted anything, but I want to explore a little bit. Um, and this is why I said earlier that this reminded me of Wind Waker. Obviously, since there's like open sea exploration. But definitely in terms of the survival exploration ruin aspect, it also reminds me of Breath of the Wild. Now, there seems to be some like big creature on this island. I saw something move there. Gorehorn. Control to sneak? While sneaking, you are much harder to detect. Maybe we can get a sneak strike or something? Oh my god, okay, it can kick. Oh no, not both at once. That's not- that was not my intention. No, no, no. Anyway, you know, I kind of just wanted to see what happens if you die. Okay. Okay. I just spawned on my boat. I will already say, and I know this is kind of a slow boat, but this already feels mostly tedious. The boat is slow, the combat is kind of weird, the climbing is... Uh. That actually made me jump. New blessing unlocked sea witch's cleansing staff. Equip at blessing shrine. Attacks of the staff will launch arcane orbs that seek and pursue their targets. What just happened? I don't even have a staff yet. I have I have a arcane magic homing missile. Uh, maybe I unintentionally went to like a late game island. You know, I'm just gonna drive into nothingness. Surely this is just like Minecraft, right? There's gonna be like another island there eventually. And I mean, I did see some blue sparkle there, so I'll just keep driving. Uh, the problem is that the waves are getting kind of, um, you know, they're getting a little, <laughs> a little tall. Wait, is this actually something on the horizon there, or is the game just messing up? What are we? We're falling. I'm pretty sure I'm falling out of the world. Wait, am I like out of bounds? I just made it like through like a texture. Okay, now we, we have to keep going at this point. Okay, it honestly looks like I'm like stuck. So yeah, at this point, I don't think we're getting much more done. Honestly, I'm probably gonna call it here. I will still give you a review and I'm not necessarily gonna bash the game. Maybe this is for you, but I'm not having fun. I'm sorry. Ah, uh, Windbound. You know, maybe there is a good game there somewhere, but I just couldn't be bothered to find it. It just felt incredibly tedious to get around, and that in a game focused on exploration. I don't know, I just feel the game didn't give us any motivation to look around on this empty ocean to find more islands just to potentially get an item you can't even use yet. I'm also not a big fan of the crafting here. It again feels like another obstacle thrown in your way to make traversal less simple. I did look up some gameplay online and yes, you can eventually make faster boats and there is more to it than empty islands, but yeah, I just couldn't be bothered to get there. Maybe if you don't mind the slow pace and the crafting and are a huge Wind Waker fan, you could somehow like this game, but I didn't. For now then, on to the next one. Immortals Phoenix Rising is probably the most popular of the games I picked out for this video. This game made waves when releasing for its heavy inspiration from Zelda's open world mechanics. Most people I have heard describe this as a mix of Greek mythology, a Fortnite-like art style and Breath of the Wild. And that sounds like a trip, so before I waste more time, let's play. So here we are at Immortals Phoenix Rising. I already see Death Mountain in the background again. I guess it's time for a new game. Let's get in. 
All right, we're playing Zelda again, see? Uh, basically look just like her. I will say there's not a lot of options here in the character selection, so this is just what we're going with. What a name, Phoenix. Sounds like the sound a dumb bird makes when it lights itself on fire, which would be ridiculous. Oh, man. Although... Ooh, this dialogue is tough to sit through, but it's okay. We will enjoy... <coughs> <coughs> a great game now, I'm sure. Look, a ghost! Captain! Can anyone hear me? Looks like the only way off this beach is up that cliff. All right, we're actually, we're actually playing the game. Um, you know, I can already tell you there is going to be a Shrine of Resurrection moment. Like, we're going to get up this cliff, right? And this is my prediction. We're going to get up this cliff and the camera pans over this amazing Greek world. That's my prediction, but let's go there. Uh, so far, we can jump and walk. Okay, so there's climbing. We got stamina. See, see, this is where, this is where it's going to happen. I can already tell. We're going to get up here and the camera pan will happen. Oh, maybe not, actually. Unless... Okay, not quite. <laughs> You've always been my hero. I'm sorry, I, I know this is supposed back. to be sad, but what is this I like crying it. dot gif? By the gods! Stay back! By the Ready gods, it's soul. time to fight. First real okay, fight. first real fight. It is time to do some combat. I don't know if there's a <laughs> what? Um right, we I defeated the attackers. Survey the land from up there. Aha! Uh -huh. This is where the Shrine of Resurrection moment will take place. Beautiful. Uh, so we gotta get up there somehow. Ambrosia. Okay. Ambro Phoenix got into the Ambrosia too? Prometheus! It's literally hard to commentate this game. They keep talking, but it's okay. Maybe that's stopping at some point, hopefully. Help! Hey! I'll save you! Okay, we gotta save this guy. I'm coming! And now, okay, and now this part of the map, so this is like a tower. This part of the map has now been revealed. The Clashing Rocks. Who knocks upon my door? Oh. No one? <laughs> okay. Oh boy, let's go. Well, that's the end of Phoenix. Is it? Perfectly passable storytelling. I won't lie, there were moments that really? Dragged, but you really got me with that ending. Now, let's settle up. Why are they trying Time so hard to be help funny? Me against Typhon. Oh, Fortnite? Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how did we just take that? That must have hurt a lot. Is this place? Uh, it's the passage in the abyss, obviously. I'm immediately reminded of Blue what Fire. What I hey, Prometheus, chill, chill, chill. Let me make Tartarus. one point. Yeah, it's Tartarus. I'm Just immediately exactly where had Phoenix landed? Tartarus. I'm, imme I'm immediately. Phoenix was in Sure, I hate you. I'm immediately. But aren't you intrigued? I'm immediately reminded of um, Blue Fire again. Kind of like these stages we had, the movement-based stages. <gasps> Not sure if that's gonna be anything like that. Wait, is that a checkpoint? Maybe it is exactly like Blue Fire. It would be weird to get a checkpoint here, but I guess I can test it. It is a checkpoint. So this is literally like that Blue Fire checkpoint mechanic. Interesting. Is this a paraglider? Uh, double jump. Okay. They actually work. We got a double jump now. The axe of Atalanta, deadliest of hunters. Oh, we can. It's that easy. We just get it. Let's try that X then. Oh. Okay, so you have to specifically cue the heavy attack. Okay. I like what I'm seeing. Beautiful. Not sure what I just did there, but I'll take it. Not bad. Oh, this guy is alive. Okay, we need to stealth attack this Gorgon. If I remember correctly, the sneak strike works by pressing F. 250 damage. Can we parry this guy? 
can. Nice. I can pick up rocks now. Then charge a throw like this. Uh, and then completely miss. 300 damage, that's massive. I will say the combat is fun. If it wasn't for the constant talking, and you could actually just like explore this world, I think I would actually enjoy myself much more. The Bow of Odysseus. We can do a charge shot. An Apollo's arrow. Okay. An arrow that we can like control, kind of like the, the little um, beetle in Skyward Sword. Is this going to be our first boss? Haha, <laughs> definitely not predictable. It's ginormous, but Phoenix just left. Oh. I'm in pain. Nice. I don't know if I took damage there. I, I think I did like a perfect dodge there. I like how it says stuck. Puzzle assistance can be turned on. Um, but I think my game crashed. Hello? Oh no, it crashed. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. Um, unless the game is crashing again. I was moving around and it is frozen again. Oh no, it crashed. Huh. Do I try it one last time? Okay, one last time. Looks like I'll need to solve this to get to the missing wing piece. Uh, I just turned around and the game immediately froze again. I literally just booted it up, I turned my camera, and it looks like it's going to be crashing immediately. Well, that's kind of inexcusable. Um, I think I'm going to call it here. I don't know how to handle it in the review, but let's jump over there. Man, I'm sad that I had to end this way, but obviously I can't recommend this game now. First of all, Immortals Phoenix Rising originally comes at a 60 euro price tag, which at that I would never ever recommend. But I got it on a massive sale for 11 euros. And let's say I got unlucky with the crashes and you actually get to play this game for the sake of reviewing it. If you can somehow make it past the unbearably, abhorrently written dialogue and the strange pacing, then maybe there is a good game here? I enjoy the visuals, the combat and even the movement to an extent, especially the combat though. But unfortunately with all of the crashes at the end, I can't in good faith recommend this one. Okay, so I know the original Oceanhorn game came out before Breath of the Wild, but the game was already heavily inspired by the Zelda series and with Oceanhorn 2 they went all in. I mean here, look at Link fighting a Bokoblin. Anyway, I actually heard good things about this game, so let's try it out. Oh, also I'm playing the Switch version here because the game is not on PC at the time of the recording, so I guess this is not a Steam game, but a Switch game. Anyway. Alright, Ocean Horn 2, Knights of the Lost Realm. And here we go. Retrieve a lockbox, stolen from me many years ago by pirates. Its contents are vital for your knighthood. <laughs> Dude! Good luck. No, shot. Master Mayfair. It's the guy! It's the guy from the Stanley Parable. Oh, I'm having a fanboy moment. I don't know if any of you played the Stanley Parable, but this is undoubtedly the same narrator. This is a fanboy moment. I want to play this game now. Oh, the Zelda music though. Okay, we get to roll. I'm playing on Switch again. The frame rate isn't amazing, which is uh, sad because this game is also on mobile. Uh, we can aim with ZL. Wait, what is this? Don't tell me it's a grappling hook. Wait, it's a gun. <laughs> it's a gun. We have a gun. No shot, the rupee sound. Unapologetic. I'm having a blast though. This is fun. There's a gravestone here. Yeah, no, <laughs> this is literally like the Sheikah eye, basically. I mean, so far, this is definitely, again, giving more like 3D Zelda vibes than Breath of the Wild, despite the stylistic choices. All right, let's see this chest opening animation. <laughs> I mean, I see it. And what are these things? Oh my god! I did not see that coming. Mm-hmm. We got our typical Zelda dungeon cam. So I guess that's where we are. 
find Master Mayfair's package in the pirate hideout. Okay. A broken bridge ahead, but don't worry. You can get across if you just keep on going. You better take care of that boulder, though. Use your shield to push it. My shield? It's a shield. It once belonged to a knight of Arcadia. Okay, so now we can defense. And we just became a level 2 cadet. We are granted bonus coins and my health is refilled. So there is a leveling system in this game. Keep the barrels away from the torches. They can catch fire easily. Okay, but that means I can probably light it up. And then bring over, right? To burn down this wood here, maybe? Aha! Game design. Oh, a hard container? It's a part of a health container. <laughs> Collect three parts to get an extra container. Oh, wow, that's a unique mechanic. Use this only with captain's permission. I have the key, so I don't need permission. I'm ready for whatever is in my way. Galactos. This is the first boss giant cephalopod of the ancients. Um, also, how can I walk here, by the way? Just curious. <laughs> when this guy is underwater. How does that work? Wait, we almost like one cycled him. Alright, here we go. Bye bye, Galactos. <laughs> okay, we found Master Mayfair's lockbox. That's what we were here for. And this is the whole map. Wow. Okay, so we're just on a small island, but there's a massive amount of, of stuff. Oh, we have a boat? Okay, sail for the first time. That's what I'm doing. I don't really see a, us sailing here. But I guess we're going to the next uh, village without explanation. Arne Village. Valley of the Warden. Let's check out the village. Cute. There's a huge tower in the back. Ah, our master is waiting for us. We got the logbox, master. A knight in training has arrived. I hope your trip went well. Did you find what I asked for? I just realized that he is the voice actor for Master Mayfair. That's amazing. Good. Now, let's head home. You must be hungry. Let's eat, and you can tell me all about your adventure. I cannot, I cannot. I, I think this guy, no matter what role he's going to do for the rest of his life, he's always going to be the narrator for Stanley Parable for me, and his voice is so good. Oh, he wrote us a note. Come to the tower near town, bring the key to the town gate. Okay, that's in the chest. Dun, 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 <laughs> is what I'm expecting here. Oh, what's up? Uh, what is his name again? Gen, right? Gen? Gen. I think it's Gen. Look who finally woke up. It is your big day, boy. Is it? Hurry to the tower in the forest. To Warden Woods. Okay, so this is like the local forest. But you know what? I think we kind of got the gist of the game. I will play this more and then give you my thoughts afterwards. But I don't want to bore you by just walking through the forest. I will play this for like at least another hour and then give you my thoughts in the review. I mean, yeah, this game is actually kind of fun. Don't expect a huge action adventure like never seen before. But if you like 3D Zelda games and want something simple to fill the gap, sure. And they got Kevin Brighting as the voice actor for this one. I mean, come on. How is Pokemon still getting away without voice acting at this point? But yeah, the frame rate isn't great, and at 17 euros this is a bit pricey for me, but all things considered, it is alright. I think this game is on Apple Arcade, so if you already use that, I think it's safe to try out. I had a blast trying out and recording these games, and I would love to do it again. If you know of any secret hidden gems or Zelda-like games on Steam you want me to try, let me know in the comments or on my livestream on Twitch, where I stream 6 days a week. I might even be live right now. But advertising aside, if you guys enjoyed it, I will make this a series, so I might see you with that on the channel soon. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.